the annual 4th of July farm fiesta. And the weather is looking a little sketchy, but we're hoping it holds. But yeah, we've got a couple of folks here. <laughs> Slip and slide and full swing. So dreamy. <laughs> Beautiful woman. All right, we got some mortars set up. The crew. States across the top with a white pine, a big pine on a white background. And the story of that flag is it depends on who you talk to, but it goes way back as far as the symbolism of the, the big pine, or that flag specifically, where I'm going to talk about it, came to be in 1775, a year before we declared independence. And it wasn't what I want, what I want to, what really hit me when I, when I was thinking about this is we celebrate the moment, which was actually a culmination, right? The declaration of independence was signed, was a culmination. It didn't just, we didn't wake up one day and decide to do that. It was, there were hundreds and even thousands of people who were collectively working towards that moment in 1776. Our first president, General George Washington, commissioned the first six cruisers of the United States Navy. It wasn't the United States Navy. On behalf of the colonies, out of his own pocket, he financed six cruisers and they flew that flag over them. The first Navy ships representing this country before we were even a country. And one of the things that, that stands out to me is there were people willing to give up what they had to that cause. There is a difference between a citizen and a patriot. A citizen is fine, you can be a citizen, but a patriot does something, gives something, is willing to sacrifice. It's not just about flying the flag and wearing the colors, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I will say, I have been so amazed and encouraged to meet and get to know as many patriots as I have living in Tennessee. Yeah. There's two important meanings to understand that flag. And in order to understand our forefathers a little bit better, understanding this flag helps with that a lot. Mm -hmm. The 
the, the, the meaning of the words and appeal to heaven come from the, the philosopher thinker John Locke. Now John Locke and, and our forefathers were, were reading his works. He, he was very important and well known in that day. An appeal to heaven came from when the justice system fails, when the rulers fail, when society is failing you. Every man has the ability to make an appeal to the higher power. Come right? On. Yeah. It doesn't matter how oppressed we are. It doesn't matter how poor we are. It doesn't matter how troubled we are. There is always the ability to make our appeal to heaven. Our forefathers, George Washington being just one of them, he knew that and he believed it. And he knew because in his time, mind you, he was a British officer at one point. He knew the greatest military on earth at the time was, was the United Kingdom, Great Britain. Greatest Navy ruled the world. 13 little colonies were going to stand up to that. He knew, and many others knew, this was not going to be done without faith and without that supreme being's blessing. The big white pine, the green tree in the middle. You'll find different interpretations, but the one I found and the one I'm going with is the Iroquois tribes in New England, in that area, had been warring against each other. There were six different tribes. And at one point, and I'm sorry, I don't remember which chief, but there was one chief that came together. Now, they were dealing with, while they're warring each other, they're warring, the, the French are invading their lands in the north, the British and the settlers are invading their lands, and this Iroquois chief goes to the rest of the tribes and he, he proposes something to them saying, we cannot stand divided. And he proposed to them that they, at the base of this large, big white pine, they all buried a hatchet. If you've ever heard that phrase, that's where it comes from. So they all made, it made a pact together and buried a hatchet, these six tribes, knowing that they could not survive individually they had to come together and work together why that ended up on that flag because for those of you who know the history the declaration of independence the constitution the, the the decision to make war against the greatest military power was did not come easy it was debated and debated and it's a it is not it's nothing short of a miracle that all 13 colonies united but that's what that green, that white pine stands for in the middle, is that they had to set aside their differences to come together in order to survive. Yeah. And I just think, you know, there's, obviously, you know, we're not, it's not, we're not, it's no secret that this country's trajectory is not clear anymore. For a long time, for generations, it was clear. Manifest destiny, the American dream. I think, I think we all know that our children's future is on shakier ground than we would like it to be. There's a lot of flags out there to fly. I love the American flag. There's the Gadsden flag, the don't tread on me flag. That's a popular one. But as a, as a father, as a Christian, as someone who wants to love my neighbors and overcome our differences, I love this flag and appeal to heaven. And it's something that I want more people to learn about. That's why I'm talking about it today. It's just, it brings us back to something, to, to our roots where we need to be. George Washington, Massachusetts, after George Washington, commissioned 25 warships and flew that flag over their ships, over their fleet. This, you could argue, or it's not even an argument, that before there were 13 colonies, stars and stripes, that was your flag. 
So I just appreciate you all coming out. It's a little bit of history and stuff that I think about. Um, might be a little corny, but, I, you know, 4th of July, Memorial Day. Um, you know, these things mean a, a whole lot to myself. I'm so grateful to be born in this country. We are so incredibly blessed. From one end of the spectrum to the other, wherever you started or finished in this nation, you are so blessed. Yep. Yeah. Come on. I don't ever want to take that for granted. I want to be a people, a community, small and big, that lean into that, that are, that, that walk in gratitude. Because I think, I think that our walk collectively as a nation would look a lot better if we were all looking through that lens, right? Yeah. I just want to pray over this, that everybody goes home safe, stays safe, everybody's safe during this. Show, but if you will, just uh, bow your heads. Don't worry. Oh, Clint. <laughs>